What's going on guys? It's Murph from Joshua Murph and I'm going to show you how to go from this to this and it might be free for you, maybe. So guys, before we get started today, there's just a couple equipment things that you're gonna need in order to make this work. Uh, obviously, I can't film this on the camera because I have to show you the camera. So here's a couple things that you're gonna need. So obviously, the first thing would be a camera. I have a Sony A7S II that I use, but you can use a lot of different cameras. A lot of Sony's work, a lot of low-level Sony's, and pretty cheap Canon's work for a lot of this thing. Nikon's, a bunch of things. But in this instance, we're gonna be using my Sony A7S II. Yo, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. We're on the road to 5K, or 10, or past 2,000. So one of the main things you're gonna need, I think almost everybody has, is a USB cable. Most cameras have them side addressed near the HDMI port. Ours is on the left side of our camera. Also something you're gonna need is power. Obviously you can use batteries, but they suck. You need a lot of them, and especially Sony batteries suck. So something you can get real cheap on Amazon is one of these bad boys that plugs right into a wall or a, any sort of USB really, and it keeps it constantly powered. And instead of getting 20 minutes of camera time, you can get like 15 hours if you decide to stream that long. That's pretty much all you're gonna need guys, so let's jump into the computer and get into the next part. So my webcam's not showing up, so I had to do a window capture on it, and that's why there's stuff on my face right here and over here. But we're getting through it, we're getting rid of the webcam anyway. Let's go. The first thing we're gonna need is something called Imaging Edge Desktop. There's gonna be a link for this from the, in the description down below. This is a Sony application. Do not be worried about it. There's nothing shady. This is a Sony app. Download for whatever computer you have. Right now I'm using my Windows, so I'm gonna download that. Actually, I already have it. I already have it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up Image Edge Desktop. You're gonna see this window right here where we have three options, remote, viewer, and edit. Now viewer and edit is very useful if you are a photographer. I don't do too much live shooting, so I'm not really in need of that. So what I'm looking for is remote right here. Now, if you click start, you're gonna see the camera is not connected. Check the USB or network connection. Obviously our camera is not connected, so we're gonna do that. So this particular function will work for most Sony cameras. You can check their website for a compatibility listing with Imaging Edge desktop. However, if you're wondering if your camera's gonna work for this and it has a micro USB, a mini USB, USB-C, USB-C especially, plug it into your computer and do some Googling. And this is how I figured out about this and honestly, I didn't know and I was a couple months behind and I've been waiting for this for a while. We're gonna plug in the micro USB camera on the side and for our camera, it's on the left side next to the HDMI port. Make sure you have power going to the camera. We'll talk about that in a minute and your options for that. Once you go ahead and hit refresh, you should see the model name, the connection through USB, and we'll just double click on that, which for a response from the camera. And you should see this screen right here, which is, gives you a full control over everything on your camera. It's actually a really, really nice functionality. I can begin recording, I can change my shutter, ISO, um, I can change just about everything. I can change the f-stop. The lens I have on it right now is a manual f-stop though. Change white balance, anything. I can start recording, autofocus. There's a million options for this. This is an amazing program if you're a camera user and you're looking for something remote. Hence, remote usage, imaging edge desktop. So if you go right here and you click live, this may be happening. And it'll say, unable to display live view. Live view will be turned off. This for me, it was a concern at first, but I found a really easy fix. All you have to do is switch camera mode settings from left to right. All you have to do is switch the camera mode settings, and we're there, baby. Look at that. Get focused. Boom. Now we have a live feed coming from our camera's live viewer straight to our computer. This wasn't possible a little while ago, and now we can see everything. And now I'm sure I look great. Now I'm getting this particular look, this particular vignette around and particular wide angle because I have this set to 4K. Since I'm not recording a lot of the time and it's just being live streamed, I feel comfortable with putting it in 4K because I'm never going to really run out of space. It doesn't record, it's just showing you the live view. However, if you know your camera has cropping on different settings, use that to your advantage. I know that I can get a little bit more cropped in if I switch to 1080 and even more so if I switch to 1080 120. 
But I don't need to be that close. I actually want to be as far away as possible because this camera right now, the camera right now, I don't know how far it looks to you guys, but it's about a forearm away. It's been, it's barely, it's like about a foot. These are all things that are very specific to my camera and that you don't generally need to concern yourself with if you're using other models and you might run into your own roadblocks and your own type of problems with them. But I hope what I'm telling you helps with that in the future. I just punched myself in the nuts. Now there's a couple different things that you can do and they're all for your different applications depending on what you're doing. I stream a lot, so for instance, I use it in Streamlabs OBS. So that's the first thing I'm gonna show you. If you're not concerned with streaming and you're more concerned with Zoom calls, Skype calls, or things of that nature, I will cover that right after this. If you're using this for streams, then you might already be familiar with Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a program that pretty much allows you to record, stream, anything with multiple layers, multiple scene switchers. It's very, very, very intuitive. It's kind of like a TV switcher at a news station, but on your computer for whatever you want to do. If you can see, I'm actually using it to record this video right now. Everything is based on input. So you have my audio input, which is my mic, and you have my window captures, which is what you're seeing right here. You have your display captures, everything like that. But just for the sake of a clean slate, we're going to do this. We're going to start a new scene. Sony setup. I had to add an audio input just for you to even hear my voice for these next couple steps. What we're going to do is you're going to want to do a window capture. I already have one set up, but we're going to start from new. So we're going to add new source instead. We'll put this as Sony webcam window. Then we're going to add the source. Give it a second. So we'll go to the window. As you can see, it shows all my windows I have open. You'll see right here, remote.exe. That's what we're looking for. Click on that. Boom. We pop right up. Hi. Hey. How are ya? So click done. Boom, we have it right here. But you'll notice it's capturing the whole window, including the camera settings and everything. Because once again, this is a live view. This isn't a webcam. This is showing you what you would see through the camera's lens. It's a live view. Okay. So one trick that OBS has that not a lot of people know is the alt key. If you hold down the alt while you're transforming a window, it will crop the window as so see mm, now you see I'm cropping out the part of the window that the camera lies in now it's a webcam essentially that I can put anywhere I can put it down here put it in the corner for instance this is my streaming for instance this is my streaming setup boom I'm in the left I'm ready to go and this looks so much better than the other webcam that I used to use it's insane also the smaller the better it looks and now we're set up and it looks great but what if you end and you're done and you come back and you show your camera off and you come back and you do everything again just like this boom it's the end of my stream oh my god i got frozen in such a weird place mark you're so silly but if you come back you'll notice that everything's frozen you can't just turn it back on it doesn't work like that but it says it's connected interesting but what you can do is you can go back and switch switch the mode the, switch the shooting modes again back and forth Give it a second. Hey, we're live, baby. We here. Boom. Back to normal. That is one solution. If you run into a problem restarting after you've already successfully done this once now, now that's if the camera goes off, but this specific application imaging edge desktop can be a little sensitive. And this is why if you look it's capturing the window, so it'll start to crop. Sometimes if your windows not on there, if you minimize, if I, if I was to minimize this window, it freezes the with the webcam. So don't keep this minimized. Keep this in the back somewhere. It doesn't have to be up front. It can be sitting in the back and also the size of the window. Don't try not to change the size of the window. But what if this closes all together? What if we close this program? Now our webcam is gone. What the hell do we do? What if the camera's off? What if you what if you forget to turn the camera on and you try and you load up your stream? Go here. You go on the remote and you get that. What the hell is that going to do? And if you look now, you have this ugly box because what you're looking at is you're looking at this. So you think, OK, I, I messed up. Let me turn the camera on. Perfect. Camera's on. Let me refresh it. Boom. Here it is. We go through all the steps as before and you'll start finding a routine. Camera's connected, not seeing it. We're going to switch the shooting modes back and forth. Click on live again. Here we are. Boom. Beautiful. Come back here. Still a white box. What do we do? Pretty easy. All you got to do, double click webcam window again, double click remote and just do it again. 
Streamlabs doesn't pick up on it too well. But now we're back. We are back, baby. And if I wanted to use this for a full for a full window, wanted to extend it like that and talk to you guys like this, I could do that because it looks great. It's not a problem. Now you're saying great, man. Looks dope. I'm so excited, but I don't care about streaming. I just want to talk to my friends. I just want to zoom. I just want to do whatever. Cool. I hear you. So you're going to want to get another program called OBS Open Broadcast Studio. The other one we were using was Streamlabs OBS, which is the same program. Just a little more user friendly, a little more functionality. I almost like to consider Streamlabs OBS the Mac to OBS's Windows. It's just a little cleaner and we're looking. So you're going to want to get OBS another program you're just doing zoom calls skype calls podcasts whatever things like that you do not need streamlabs obs you just need obs the links for both in the description down below so this is obs if you look at it it is very very similar to streamlabs obs which we have right here See? we have our scenes to the left our sources our mixer all that so I created a new scene, we're gonna call it Sony Setup. Just like before, we're gonna add a new source. Window capture, just like before. Do another one, Sony Cam 2. Just cause I don't wanna use the same one so I can show you guys everything from scratch. Same thing, we're gonna capture the window. Remote, boom. Same thing, we're gonna use the Alt key. Cut this thing down. You guys skip forward in the video, I apologize, but we covered this in the other section. So we're gonna make this full screen now. Bada bing. Now that is our scene. Now what we're gonna wanna do, go to tools and do virtual cam. If you do not have virtual cam, a link will be in the description for virtual cam. There is a little bit of a setup of virtual cam, pretty much make sure to activate all four cameras, that all four are free. You might not need all four, but you might as well do it. So we're gonna do auto start, target camera, OBS camera, and we're gonna press start. Now what this is doing is it's taking the window that we're looking at right here, this right here, my beautiful face, and it's turning it into a webcam. I could go over here to Streamlabs and add a video capture device and it's picking up the OBS camera. You understand that? It's picking up the other OBS camera that it's putting out as a webcam and now I can select that as a webcam on Streamlabs OBS. That might sound complicated. It is a little complicated. It is a little complicated. It is a little complicated. Just a disclaimer, you could do this process for the streaming thing. It's just kind of an extra step. You don't need to. This is more so if you're using it for calls and stuff like that. But in the end, it works out the same. You're still making it into a webcam and then Streamlabs can. All right, guys, so I wanted to do this video in two minutes, but that was so stupid. There's no way I could have. All right, guys, so listen, there is a lot that goes into this. I tried to answer all the questions that I had when I was figuring this out. But if you have any more questions, put them in the comments down below. Maybe I didn't think of them. Maybe I don't know the answers. Maybe somebody else can help you with the answers. But for a community, I want to try to get everybody to help each other. Now, I have a lot of friends with good cameras and a lot of people that do a lot of stuff like this. So I hope this helped them. If you guys did get any help, make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment down below and let me know. Let me know what else you want to know in this realm there's a lot more that we can do with this as once you get your camera connected and you're using obs and you're setting up these things and it's insane so there's a lot to cover i tried to cover the main points i also tried to cover some issues that you might run into that i could try to help you negate once again i am murph from josh and murph thank you guys so much for tuning in if you made it this far in this episode make sure you comment down below and tell me your favorite baseball team i don't have one but if I had to pick one, I would say like the Orioles because it's a fun word to say. Oriole, 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 Oriole. Have I been to Baltimore? Yeah, I've been to Baltimore. Baltimore is cool. Oriole. But I should probably say Red Sox because I'm from New England. Anyway, anyway, love you guys. This has been another video. I'm Murph. Peace.